What's going on, everyone? My name's Tenebris and Bullets, dude! They're the bread and butter of everything in Generation Zero. From spectacular firefights to long-range sniping, whether you like to pick your shots tactfully, shoot a lot of bullets, or shoot a heckin' lot of bullets, I'm sure the thought has probably passed through your mind at some point or another. How much damage am I doing? Should I be using armor-piercing rounds? And, I mean, what the heck do they even do? And what is the point of hollow point or soft point rounds when you're fighting hulking behemoth machines? Well, today we're going to answer all of that and then some in one of my most detailed videos yet, breaking down each of the ammo types in Generation Zero, comparing their component to armor damage, and talking about a ton of fun stuff along the way. If you happen to learn something new, consider hitting that thumbs up button or subscribing if you haven't. Also, check out the description below for timestamps to see if there's anything you want to learn about in particular. So first things first, let's get to the basics of armor piercing versus full metal jacket rounds. The idea is that each bullet type in Generation Zero has a particular specialty. Armor piercing is for armor pieces, FMJ is an all-rounder, and hollow point or soft point rounds are balanced for component damage. And with the 762 FMJ rounds, you see we do about 12% damage to the fuel tank. And I say about because Generation Zero has damage ranges. This is something we'll talk on more as we get into the video, but damage is never just a straight up solid number. It can be consistent, but it's never like, oh, the AK does 50 damage per bullet. It's more like you get a range of 10 to 12% damage to a component based on how direct your hit was. Then, as you can see, as armor piercing rounds are best suited for armor instead of components, we do less overall damage with AP rounds on components. Now, it's not a huge margin of damage difference, but that's kind of how Generation Zero works. A drop of 1-3% to can be a huge drop in standards when it comes to damage ranges. So, you always want to try to use FMJ for components and AP rounds for any type of armor. But that's just ultimately a best practice. It can totally be argued to be a quantity over quality thing with bullets here in Generation Zero, but if you want to get the best out of your combat scenarios, this is the sort of stuff you really want to keep in mind. As a final aside, if you're wondering about the difference between designated target or make them count, there is none. So ultimately, from a DPS perspective, make them count is the better skill. And these skills only relate to weapons that have a toggle between full auto and semi auto, so realistically, they only benefit assault rifles and SMGs. Now let's get back to damage ranges, because I've got some of the best footage of this factor of Generation Zero happening right here. Now, I'm not sure when, but somewhere along the way, shots that clearly miss a component but still hit the machine will find its damage soaked to a particular nearby component. And this here shows damage ranges in a hyperbolized form. A shot way off the mark only does 1% of its total damage with 762 FMJ rounds. Here, let's try to show this off a little bit better than just that 1% shot and dump a little bit of a magazine into the shoulder of the machine here. And you can see that we wind up doing the damage to the component, not to the armor piece that's just behind it. The further in on the mark you are, the better your damage ranges will be, but just because you're way off the mark doesn't mean you won't do any component damage at all. Basically, this answers why hunters randomly started having their fuel cells destroyed when you shoot at them from the front. If you've ever seen that happen, this is why. Now let's look at a round specific to the hunting rifles in Generation Zero, the soft point. Designated for component damage, these rounds are actually underrated beasts here in Generation Zero, taking out components in 2-3 to three shots on some of the biggest machines in the game. We can see one soft point from the Mauser does a whopping 40% on the fuel cell, a huge jump from the, what, 10-12% to 12 we were seeing from 762 rounds. Now, machine health is greatly affected by destroying components, so you can see that being able to take down a component in 3 shots versus 9-10 to 10 shots is a pretty good chunk of damage. 
FMJ performs slightly worse at 32% damage, so ultimately, with hunting rifles, you want to stick to their strengths with soft point rounds. And even though the damage to armor can actually be surprisingly high to what you might expect, neither the FMJ or soft point rounds perform that well against armor, so you want to leave armor stripping to other weapons in the game. Which I mean, hey, that's probably a given, but you might not expect to be able to remove a piece of armor in roughly 4-5 to five shots from a hunting rifle. So, worst case scenario, that hunting rifle could be your best option. Now, let's talk about the 44 Magnus. With this boil, we see the pistol's version of the soft point, the hollow point rounds here in Generation Zero. And it's much of a similar deal as the hunting rifles. You can almost consider the Magnus to be a handgun equivalent to a hunting rifle. On a component, the hollow point rounds are better than the FMJ rounds by about 5%, which, again, is a pretty sizable difference. And the Magnus performs even worse than the hunting rifles against armor. So, for this one, I really don't recommend for anything than components with the hollow point rounds out of the Magnus. Just on a purely objective level, FMJ 44 Magnus rounds are better off scrapped in your workbench than carried around or used for combat. Alright, so next up I thought we'd compare the two best sniper rifles in the game, the ALG and the PVG. One better for stealthy operations, and the other is essentially the most mainstay weapon in the entire game. But how do they compare? The PVG being a FMJ AP round using weapon versus the ALG soft point and FMJ rounds. And the PVG actually beats out the ALG by 4%, clearly making the PVG far superior due to it being able to handle both armor and components where the ALG is left to relatively just component damage. And speaking of armor, AP rounds out of the 50 cal are some of the best anti-armor rounds in the game, taking out plates and one or two shots with AP rounds. Then being able to switch back to FMJ for massive amounts of component damage, it's no wonder everyone and their grandma carries a 50 cal in this game. Now for shotgun rounds, something I've always wondered about. You'd, you'd probably expect it to be birdshot, buckshot, and slugs in that order of firepower. But is that how it really is here in the game? And funnily enough, it's not. Slugs are grossly underpowered for some reason, and the real supreme shotgun round is buckshot. It performs better against armor and components, and even though it might not have the same control as slugs do at further ranges, if you put a choke on your shotgun, you'll be doing just fine at anything from a medium distance. Now the difference between buck and bird is only 1%, so it's also an unexpected damage thing. I always thought that bird were way weaker, but really, when you land all the pellets, bird and buckshot are borderline identical. 556, man. Okay, so I love this round in games. 556 weapons are usually so controllable and reliable and usually is a great choice against soft targets. But sadly, here in Generation Zero, its lack of armor-piercing potential is understandable. Its lack of component damage is less so, but you know, not all guns have to be showstoppers. And the 556 guns make up for the lack of punch and visual appeal, I think. If you are going to use a 556 weapon, the KVM-89 is your best bet. But still, its 9% component damage pales in comparison to 762, and even less so in comparison to hunting rifle and BMG rounds. Now for SMGs and pistols. SMGs are pretty good, actually, all things considered, and taking DPS into consideration, 10% component damage with some of the SMGs fire rate is actually a really solid amount of damage shot per shot. All SMGs do the same damage, but fire rate is what really matters, and in this you have the choice between the Experimental K-Pist or the Comp 10 for the best SMG. Armor damage is pretty good too, so with AP rounds and again taking fire rate into consideration, SMGs are sleeper hits in this game, reputable powerhouses in their own regard. For pistols, a similar 9mm round, you actually do less damage shot per shot 
which then, thinking DPS, means that realistically you could upgrade your pistol if you use one to an SMG for a much more powerful last resort. Funny thing to note, the 9mm pistol does the same amount of damage as the KVM-89. Let that sink in for a moment. Then, the most unexpected result of today's video. The Molar PP is stronger than the 9mm pistol when it comes to components with hollow points. Meaning, yes, the Molar PP outdamages 556 rifles. Again, let that one sink in for a moment. Next up for a couple miscellaneous type rounds, from the bow and the flamethrower in specific. The bow is one of my favorite weapons in this whole dang game. It's a beast of a bow and does crazy component damage. 64% from one arrow, so it outdamages the PVG when it comes to components. Disgusting, to say the least. Explosive arrows overall do less to components individually, but do crazy amounts of armor damage. Just 1% shy of 50 cals. So this bow is top meta, man. You can pair it with the 50 cal, or a weapon we'll talk about in a second here, and essentially become the god of Ostatorn. Then for a kind of weird one, uh, the flamethrower. So the flamethrower, outright, it doesn't have very much punch, but it's a DPS kind of stacking kind of thing. I don't find the flamethrower to be super great for big machines, even though you can totally use it for big machines. Uh, I find it to be a little bit more efficient for the smaller machines, though, where you could stagger them with that burn damage. But still, the flamethrower, it, it does okay. It's all right. Lastly, let's cycle on back to Showstoppers, the weapon that just punches machines in and or around the face. Explosive weapons. Now, the thumper is admittedly kinda wimpy, but the GRG and the RLG, we start to see that these are some of the strongest weapons in the entire game. With the GRG doing a whopping 72% damage to the fuel cell, and the RLG doing 85% damage. Currently, our strongest weapon in the game is a freaking rocket launcher, dude! Yes! Look at it, looking at it just like purely on paper, the RLG is Generation Zero's most powerful weapon, shot per shot. Now, there is the benefit of like experimental weapon effects that maybe make the experimental PVG just as good as the RLG, but on a completely objective level here, my dudes, RLG, best gun in the game. And when it comes to armor damage, it's the same deal. The RLG reigns supreme, being the only weapon to take out 100% health of the tank's faceplate on skirmish difficulty. A prestigious achievement, man. The GRG does real good, and due to ammo availability, might be the less expensive choice between the two, doing 93% damage to that tank's face, but the RLG beats it by 7%, and as we've gone over here, that 7% really matters in the grand scheme of things. So there's a ton of information in this one. Let's summarize things as we wrap up here. Basically, 50 cal armor piercing and RLG rounds are the best in the game for anti-armor. The RLG is the strongest weapon in the game, the bow's a monster, SMGs are great, avoid FMJ rounds and the 44 Magnus and hunting rifles, keep your target in mind for AP, SP, or FMJ rounds, and swap ammo on the fly to make the best use of it. There's a lot more information in this video than just that, but I think those are the best points to keep in mind moving forwards with your adventures in Ostatorn. If you see anyone in the community needing help with a weapon or ammo type, maybe try pointing them towards this video so we could get the whole community here on the same page, or leave a like on the video as it goes a huge way in helping me reach the greater community. But for now, hopefully you all enjoyed, thank you for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one! Until then, peace!